Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to tonight's children's service. Do you know who I am? I'm Iron Man. That's right, I'm Iron Man. Have you ever met Iron Man? Do you know who Iron Man is? I am Iron Man. And I want to welcome you to the service tonight. We are so glad you've joined us. So glad the children from our church have joined us. So glad that the children from other places have joined us and maybe even adults and parents. I am Iron Man. Not really, I'm not really Iron Man, but I had some fun with that mask and we're going to use this mask in just a little bit to teach us a very great truth. But we want to welcome you to our service tonight, and we are so glad that you've joined us for our children's service. And again, maybe perhaps children from our church, maybe perhaps children from other places, maybe even parents and adults have joined us. We're looking forward to a wonderful service this evening as we look into God's Word and we teach you some great truths. So I hope you have your Bible with you because it's going to be very important to have our Bible here in just a little bit. And then I hope you have a smile on your face, you have your ears open, and you're ready to sing and ready to listen and ready to make decisions for Jesus tonight. So let's pray and ask the Lord to bless our time together as we have our children's service this evening. Father, thank you for the opportunity we have to join with our children here in this video for our children's service on this Wednesday evening. And we are so thankful for the opportunity that we have to use a video like this to reach inside of the homes of the children from our church and even maybe perhaps children and family members outside of our church as well. And so I pray that you would bless this special time that we have together I pray that you would speak to our hearts. I pray that as we look into the Word of God, that we can make decisions for you today. And most importantly, while we're watching this video, if there would be somebody that has never trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior, that they may come to know you even this evening. Thank you for the opportunity we have to do this video. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us tonight for our children's video. And we've got a lot of special things planned tonight. And so first of all, let's jump right into some songs. And in order to sing the first song that we have scheduled tonight, you've got to have your Bible ready. Because this song is called, Get the New Look from the Old Book. We sing this one at church sometimes. We'll sing it on our bus as well. And every time we mention anything that has to do with the Bible in the song, you have to raise your Bible in the air and wave it around a little bit. So I'll sing the song for you and I'll raise my Bible when we're supposed to. And maybe if you know the song, you can sing it the first time. If you don't know it, maybe you can sing it the second time with us. We'll sing it through a second time. It goes like this. Get the new look from the old book. Get the new look from the Bible. Get the new look from the old book. Get the new look from God's Word. The inward look, the outward look, the upward look from the old, old book. Get the new look from the old book. Get the new look from God's Word. And God's Word, of course, is called the Bible. And this is a book that we need to spend time in every single day. It's a special book that God has written for us. I was talking with my children just last night about how that this is God's letter to us. It's really like God's love letter to us. He's given us a letter and he wants us to read that letter. And you know what? Every time we read the Bible, every time we read it, God teaches us something new. And so this is his letter for us and we need to spend time in it. So let's see if we could sing that song one more time. Are we ready? Get our good singing voices on with me together. Get the new look from the old book. Get the new look from the Bible. Get the new look from the old book. Get the new look from God's Word. The inward look, the outward look, 
the upward look from the old, old book. Get the new look from the old book. Get the new look from God's Word. And I hope you were able to sing that. Well, in our lesson time, just a little bit later on in our service time today, we are going to be teaching you about a time when people became Christians. They came to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And so the word Christian is spelled C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. And we sing a song on our bus that spells that word out. And it goes like this. I am a C. I am a C-H. I am a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. And I have C-H-R-I-S-T in my H-E-A-R-T. And I will L-I-V-E-E-T-E-R-N-A-L-L-Y. And that song is spelling this. I am a Christian. And I have Christ in my heart and I will live eternally. So let's see if you can sing along with me this time and be able to spell the words in that song that we are singing. Ready? It goes like this. I am a C. I am a C-H. I am a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. And I have C-H-R-I-S-T and my H-E-A-R-T and I will L-I-V-E-E-T-E-R-N-A-L-L-Y. And then we sing it and we get a little bit faster each time we sing it. Let's sing it through two more times and we'll get a little bit quicker and we have to spell those words really fast while we sing. So ready? It goes like this. I am a C. I am a C-H. I am a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. And I have C-H-R-I-S-T and my H-E-A-R-T and I will L-I-V-E-E-T-E-R-N-A-L-L-Y. I am a C. I am a C-H. I am a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N. And I have C-H-R-I-S-T in my H-E-R-T, and I will L-I-V-E-T-E-R-N-A-L-O-Y. All right, I have Christ in my heart because I'm a Christian, and I will live eternally. Well, you know what? There is a verse in the Bible, and it's in the New Testament of our Bible, and it's in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter number 4. And you know, in Ephesians chapter number 4, the Bible starts to teach us some things in this little section of Ephesians chapter number 4, where we're going to be at for just a moment for our Bible verse. He teaches us some things that we have to do with our tongue, with our mouth, and the way that we speak to one another. And that's why I put on my mask that I had this evening when I started off the service. And I told you that I was Iron Man. You know what? When you put on a mask like this, you can pretend to be somebody else. Somebody that you are not. But you know what? When I take this mask off, even though I'm pretending just a few minutes to be Iron Man, you know it doesn't really change who I am, does it? I'm still the same person that I am on the back side of this mask. But you know what? When we put it on, we have some fun sometimes. Maybe we'll wear a little outfit like this to be able to pretend like we're somebody that we're not really. But you know what? In our lives, we can also deceive or trick someone into thinking something that is not true. We can deceive or we can trick somebody into thinking something that is not true. Just like this mask makes me pretend for just a few minutes that I'm someone that I'm not really. And you know what? When we trick or deceive someone into thinking something that is not true, the Bible calls that lying, doesn't it? The Bible calls it lying. When we trick or deceive someone into thinking something that's not true, you know, the Bible calls lying a sin. And you know, it calls it a sin. And it also tells us that we ought to stay away from lying. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25, just the very first part of it, if you've got your Bible there in front of you, it says, Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. Do you realize that Satan is a liar. Satan is the enemy of God, isn't he? Sometimes we call him Satan. Sometimes we call him the devil. But he is a liar. And you know, he wants to deceive you. 
And he wants to lie to you. And he wants you to be a liar as well. Even if you're a Christian and you've already asked Jesus to be your savior, he wants to deceive you and he wants to lie to you and he wants to get you to be a liar as well. You know, the devil, he deceives people and he wants to deceive or trick people or lie to people so that they do not go to heaven. But even after somebody has trusted Jesus as their savior, he still tries to deceive you. He still tries to lie to you by saying things like, God isn't really good. Or his word, the Bible, isn't really true. Or if you serve him with your life, he won't really bless you like he says he'll bless you. And so the devil, he deceives us and he lies to us and he wants to get you to lie as well. But here's the great truth that we want to get from this Bible verse tonight. I want you to learn that God's word is teaching us not to give in to the devil. Don't let the devil cause you to pretend with somebody and tell them a lie, deceiving them with something that is not true. Don't give in to the devil because here's the truth about lying. The Bible tells us that lying must and will be punished. God cannot let us get away with our lying. God cannot let us tell a lie and get away with it. He has to punish us for our lying. So the best policy for every one of us is to always tell the truth. Even though we could put a mask on like this, and pretend to be somebody for a little while and have a little fun with it. Remember, it's never okay to pretend or deceive someone into thinking something that is not the truth. That is a lie. And lying is sin. And sin must be punished. Do not let the devil have his way. Do not give in and lie, and tell that which is not the truth. So let's quote our Bible verse. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.25, Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. Ephesians 4.25. Now let's review the verse like we have in the past services that we've done here on our videos. We're going to say one of the words, but we're also going to clap the word at the same time. How about we'll use the word lying? Ready? Here we go. Ephesians 4.25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. Ephesians 4.25. Now, let's review it again. But this time, I want everyone saying it. Everyone. And when we get to the word neighbor, we're going to clap while we say the word. So now we've got the word lying. And we've got the word neighbor. Are we ready? Ready, here we go. Ephesians 4, 25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. Ephesians 4, 25. Now this time, let's do it with the word truth. Let's do it with the word truth. So we've got the word lying, we've got the word truth, and we've got the word neighbor. Let's clap while we say all three of those words. Are we ready? Ephesians 4.25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. Ephesians 4.25. And then let's do it on the word speak. So we've got the word lying, the word speak, the word truth, and the word neighbor. Let's clap as we say all four of those words. Ready? Ephesians 4, 25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. Ephesians 4, 25. Now let me share with you some things that that Bible verse is trying to teach us. Number one, it's a command that God has given to us. It's a command. God wants us to speak truth to our neighbor. But number two, it pleases God when we tell the truth because God has to punish us when we lie. So when we speak the truth, it pleases God. 
So even though at times it's okay to pretend by putting on a mask to be somebody else, let's never pretend or deceive somebody into thinking something that is not really the truth, something that is a lie. Because remember, it's a sin and God must punish it. Let's remember that truth about lying. One more time with our verse, ready? Ephesians 4.25, wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. Ephesians 4.25. How many of you know how to count to 10? You know how to count to 10? Let's see if we can count to 10 together, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Boy, you did a good job counting to ten. Well, there's a song that we sing sometimes that have those numbers in it. And it goes like this. One, two, three, Jesus loves me. One, two, Jesus loves you. Three and four, he loves you more, more than you've ever been loved before. Five, six, seven, I'm going to heaven. Eight, nine, the mansions are mine. Now we've sung right up to ten, and we do have time to sing it again. So one, two, three, Jesus loves me. One, two, Jesus loves you. Three and four, he loves you more, more than you've ever been loved before. Five, six, seven, I'm going to heaven. Eight, nine, the mansions are mine. Now we've sung right up to ten, and we don't have time to sing it again. We are going to sing it again one more time, though, because sometimes we sing with a little bit different words when we get down there to the finish. We'll sing one, two, three, Jesus loves me. One, two, Jesus loves you. Three and four, he loves you more, more than you've ever been loved before. Five, six, seven, I'm going to heaven. Eight, nine, the mansions are mine, but sometimes we'll say glory divine. So let's see if we can sing it that way this time. Ready? One, two, three, Jesus loves me. One, two, Jesus loves you. Three and four, he loves you more, more than you've ever been loved before. Five, six, seven, I'm going to heaven. Eight, nine, glory divine. Now we've sung right up to ten, and we do have time to sing it again. So one, two, three, Jesus loves me. One, two, Jesus loves you. Three and four, he loves you more, more than you've ever been loved before. Five, six, seven, I'm going to heaven. Eight, nine, glory divine. Now we've sung right up to ten, and we don't have time to sing it again. Boy, I hope you're having fun and doing a good job singing there at home. Well, right before we get into our Bible lesson tonight, which is going to be a great one, you're going to really enjoy it, we're going to sing one last song, and this one deals with our ABCs. Some of you might know your ABCs. Say it with me if you know them. Ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Now, we have a song that we sing that has the alphabet in it as well. Some of you may know this one. For some of you, it might be a new one. But let's see if we can sing it together. It goes like this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Jesus died for you and me. H, I, J, K, L, M, N. Jesus died for sinful men. Amen! O, P, Q. R S T U. I believe God's word is true. U V W. God has promised you X Y Z a home eternally. And let's see if we can do that one one more time. Ready? A B C D E F G. Jesus died for you and me. H I J K L M N. Jesus died for sinful men. Amen! O-P-Q-R-S-T-U. 
I believe God's word is true. UVW, God has promised you XYZ, a home eternally. Man, I hope you've enjoyed singing with us tonight. It has been a great joy. Well, remember what we said about our mask, that we can use our mask sometimes to have fun and pretend to be someone or something that we are not really. But remember, it doesn't change the real us. And God desires us to be truthful, to not pretend or deceive someone into thinking something that is not true. That would be a lie. Well, today, we're going to learn a story about two people in the Bible who lied. They didn't just lie to people on earth, they lied to God as well. And we're gonna find out that God gave them a serious punishment. So I hope that you'll take your Bible out. I hope that you'll open it to the book of Acts in the New Testament of our Bible. We're gonna start with a couple verses in chapter number four, and then we're gonna move into a couple verses in chapter number five. So find Acts in your Bible as we hear a story about two people that lied, and we're going to find out what their punishment was. And I hope it will help us to learn the great truth to make sure we are truthful and we are honest in our lives. You take your Bible out, and let's move on to our story now. We're going to look in the Bible in Acts chapter number 4 and 5 in just a moment. But right before we get to the story today, let me tell you a story that leads into our Bible story. Mary sat in the middle of her half-cleaned room. Grandpa had bought a big bag of popcorn and dropped it off at her house. He said that she could eat it if she cleaned her room before lunch. She really wanted that popcorn but had to admit she wasn't going to finish cleaning in time. Then she thought, Grandpa won't really know I ate the popcorn before I finished. When he calls, I could just say, thanks for the popcorn, Grandpa. But deep down, Mary knew that wasn't right. She would be deceiving her Grandpa into believing the job was done when really it wasn't. Having made up her mind, Mary picked up the popcorn and went downstairs. Mom, she called. Here's the popcorn Grandpa gave me. You'd better take it. I didn't get my room cleaned on time. It wasn't really easy, but Mary did what was right. She chose to be truthful and not deceive her grandfather. That was a tough choice, but she made the right choice. In our Bible lesson today, we're going to learn about two Christians who also had a choice to make that wasn't so easy. As Peter and John, two of Jesus' disciples, preached about Jesus, many people became Christians right here in our Bible story in the book of Acts. Do you realize that there might be some that would be listening today that have never become a Christian? The Bible tells us that Peter and John preached about Jesus. And when they did, people became Christians because of the message that they delivered. Do you realize that God wants you to hear that message if you've never received him as your savior? The Bible tells us that God loved us so much that he sent his son down from heaven to this earth to die on a cross for us. The reason why he had to die on a cross for us is because that we are all sinners. The Bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible tells us that because we're sinners, we deserve to pay a punishment, a price for our sin. And that's why Jesus died, so that the price for our sin could be paid and our sins could be forgiven. The Bible tells us that Jesus died on that cross. After he died, he was buried and he rose again. 
And if we will just trust Christ as our Savior, we can know for sure that we're a Christian and we're on our way to heaven. We must admit that we're a sinner, that we've done things and said things and thought things that have displeased God. We believe that he died for us, was buried, and he rose again. And we call on him and ask him to be our Savior, just to tell him that we know we're a sinner and tell him that we believe that he died for us and was buried and he rose again. And we ask him to save us. And the Bible tells us that he will do what he said he would do. He would save us if we just ask him. If you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, I hope that you will do that right now. Do you know when Peter and John preached about Jesus? Many of those people that believed and became Christians, they started meeting together for Bible study and prayer, which is exactly what we do when we come to church. That's why it is so important to make sure we are faithful to church so we can study from the Bible and we can pray and talk to the Lord Jesus together as believers. Well, the believers in Jerusalem also did something else. The Bible tells us that they shared the things that they owned with each other so that they could take care of each other's needs. The Bible says in Acts 4, verse 32, and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was it. It was his own, but they had all things common. That means that they would share the things that they owned with each other. The Bible tells us that some of these believers even sold their land or their possessions, the things that they owned. And they gave the money to the apostles for those in need, those who had needs. The Bible says in verse 34 of chapter 4, neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. The Bible tells us about a man whose name was Ananias and a lady whose name was Sapphira in the next chapter. Acts chapter 5 tells us about this man named Ananias and this lady named Sapphira who sold a piece of property they owned. However, when they were paid, they decided to keep some of the money but deceive others into thinking they had given it all to God. The Bible says in Acts chapter 5, verse 1, but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. That means that all of the money they made for this property, some of it they kept for themselves, and some of it they gave to the apostles to use for people that had needs. Now, Ananias knew about the money and his wife knew about the money as well, but they thought they were going to deceive other people. Well, Peter saw right through their lie and he came up to Ananias. He said to Ananias, how is it? that Satan has gotten you to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep some of the money for yourselves, he asked. The Bible says in Acts chapter 5, verse 3, but Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Peter said to Ananias, while it was your money, you could do anything you wanted to do with it. But why did you lie and say you had given it all? You have not only lied to us, but you have also lied to God. The Bible says in verse four, 
While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou deceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Do you ever lie? Have you ever told a lie? Do you realize it is sin to lie? You may fool others when you lie, but lying never fools God. The Bible says in Galatians chapter six and verse number seven, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. What this Bible verse is teaching us is that you cannot lie to God and get away with it. He knows what you have done and he cannot be fooled. And the Bible is telling us in that verse that God must punish lying. Well, let's find out how God punished the lying of Ananias and Sapphira. When Ananias heard what Peter had told him, he fell right to the ground and died. Some young men came and wrapped up his body and carried him out to bury him. When others heard what had happened, they were very afraid. The Bible says in verse five, and Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. That means he died. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. Well, three hours later, his wife, Sapphira, returned home. But she was unaware of what had happened to her husband. The Bible says in verse seven, and it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. Peter asked Sapphira, is the money you gave the full amount you got for the land you sold? Remember what we told you, they had sold some land and kept part of it, gave part of it to the apostles to meet the needs of those who had needs. And both Ananias and Sapphira knew the truth and they had agreed together to lie. Yes, Sapphira said, that is the full price. The Bible says in verse eight, and Peter answered unto her, tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, yay, for so much. How could you both agree to deceive the Lord, Peter asked. The men who have just buried your husband, Ananias, are at the door and they are going to carry you out as well. The Bible says in verse 9, then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Immediately, she fell to the floor and died. Her body was taken out and buried by the same men who had buried her husband. The whole church was shocked and fearful when they heard how severely God had punished Ananias and Sapphira. The Bible says in verse 10, then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her body and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Do you understand today in our lesson that you cannot fool God. The reason why you cannot fool God is because he is all knowing. When you tell a lie, God must punish lying. Not because he wants to hurt you, 
but because he loves you. Now, God may not punish someone today for lying the same way he punished Ananias and Sapphira, but God must punish us when we lie. The lesson can be learned today not to give in to Satan, but to let God help you to be truthful. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.25, wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. The Bible says in Psalm 51 and verse number six, behold, thou, that's God, desireth or he wants truth in the inward parts. Inward parts is speaking of our heart. God wants us to speak the truth in our hearts. He doesn't want us to lie and deceive and trick people into believing or thinking something that is not the truth. And we must remember, even as Christians, when we lie, we cannot get away with it. We will not fool God. So do not give in to Satan. Do not tell that which is untruthful. Let's learn a great lesson as a Christian to speak the truth. And then if you have never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you've heard the gospel today. And if God has spoken to your heart, I hope that you will bow your head right there where you're at and tell God that you're sorry for your sin, believe that he died for you and who's bare and he rose again and ask him to be your Savior even today. Father, thank you for what we've learned from our lesson time today. Pray that you'd help us to realize that we cannot fool you. We cannot deceive you. We cannot trick you when it comes to lying because you're all knowing and you know when we tell the truth and you know when we speak a lie. So I pray that you would help us not to give in to Satan, not to give in to the devil, but to be truthful and speak that which is truth. I pray that you would help us to make that decision today that we will, with God's help, always speak the truth. Help us to realize that when we do not speak the truth, God must punish our untruthfulness. Pray if there is somebody here today that has never trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior, someone here listening and watching, that you would help them to make that decision even today. Bless your word as it's taught. In Jesus' name, amen.